Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on where you're listening from. My name is Richard and today I am on the platform of Medillary.com and I just want to take a few minutes to share my knowledge with you guys and um, how I work, my workflow. And I also want to talk about um, the three pillars of a design career. Uh, before I move in, I first like to appreciate uh, the owners of the brand and platform Medillary.com thank you for the opportunity thank you for the privilege to be on your platform i i don't take it for granted it's a it's a rare opportunity and what you're doing is rare and i trust god that you know he's gonna increase you guys he's gonna make you blossom and you're going places you're definitely going places so for those that are uh, you're coming across this video and um, this website for this platform for the very first time this is medillary.com it's a site that allows you to get your design jobs done for free so feel free to register create a project and the professional designer would work on your design and get it done for you to the best and best of qualities i guarantee you you will be grateful and you'll be glad you actually tried this out so let's move straight in without taking much of our time all right good so i'll be talking about the three pillars of a design career um but most of us on this platform now you're coming here on this site i believe you are a designer or you're an upcoming designer or you're someone that has an interest in designing you get what i'm trying to say so there is that intention there is that desire in you to get designs done for people or for yourself or your brand you want to learn you want to equip yourself with it that is why you are here now there are major softwares that you could use to get your design jobs done there's adobe photoshop there's adobe illustrator there is um, Corel Draw Graphics Suite, and there is one which is not too popular that I use also. It's called GIMP, G-I-M-P. It's GIMP. I want to urge you, you can go online, check out other softwares you use. Who knows, one day you'll come across a client that is willing to even pay you big to use a particular software they are not familiar with. Yeah, I've had that experience, so I can tell you firsthand. So GIMP is a software you could also learn. It works almost similar to Photoshop, kind of. So there, there are quite some similarities. So most of these softwares have... Um, similarities so whatever software you decide to use uh, whatever software you decide to use you can achieve your design goals so the first thing I want to talk about in the three pillars of a design career is creativity this is very important most people find it hard to come up with um, creative styles come up with things come up with design flows uh, you know most times at, at the time when I started I had to draw out my designs on a piece of paper look at it then bring it into the system and digitize it you get what i'm trying to say so you have to get creative and i opened a few tabs if you're looking at my screen right now i opened a few tabs on the screen and i'm gonna talk about some of them now for creativity one of the sites you can use to draw inspiration from please understand what i'm trying to say uh, most times the easiest way to build yourself is to learn from others that have done what you want to do get on trying to say so one of the sites you can get inspiration from is pinterest pinterest is not just for fashion it's not just for anything but you can draw inspiration from it i'll load it up uh, i hope my bandwidth is quite good today all right so uh, it's loading up um let's see awesome so as you can see this is pinterest now when it comes to creativity you see you just come here and you see different designs and this is enough to blow your mind. This is enough to change your mindset. This is enough to build your, you know, design mind. <laughs> Let me call it that. So uh, this is my personal uh, page on Pinterest. And take a look at this. This is beautiful. This, this is a pineapple design here. This is beautiful. Nikao piece. Look, look at it. It looks simple, clean, and classy. Look at it. Uh, there's a flyer here that says All Town Fire. You see that there's an altar, there's a fire. You know, those are different concepts. You come here, you feed your mind. You, you get what I'm trying to say? You feed your mind, study a particular design, and you go out and replicate it. One of the things you can do also is on the search bar, you can, you see, I have I have recent searches. Bed the flyers, CD design, CD covers, CD, you see what I'm saying? I use the site often. So, um, coming through. Okay, so this is a... A platform you can use to get design ideas build your mind uh, let, I was about to show you my recent search let me show you that so take for example you want to make um, 
a flyer design and then you just come to Pinterest and then type in flyers you see flyer design you click on flyer designs probably the first option whatever one you want to choose and you see different concepts you see you see you see this you see how beautiful they look see how beautiful they look so at this point you can't come here and say you know I want to pick one flyer and you know edit it or something nah you don't do that but what you could do is you come to let's say this flyer for example take a look at this this is classy just classy this is simple this is a house repair flyer that is still loading up i don't know okay that's it so you see this this is this is good so you could come here pick an idea wow i love this design i can use this design for the one my clients want you just go to your design software and you replicate this design same style you could tweak a little things you could change the way it looks but you, you but i'm sure you get what i'm trying to say so creativity no man is an island on by himself no man's an island on his own we learn by working with others we learn by seeing what they have done we learn by learning you know just coming together and sharing ideas so someday once your designs have become super and once you're super confident in your designs you could come to um, pinterest create uh, an account on and then upload your designs to get people to even like it so this is just for getting ideas see this is a this is a business card right here right here this is a business card here and look at how classy it looks look how classy it looks you could replicate this kind of a design of a business card for even your your clients that has a fashion out, outlet you see this is classy this is classy simple mature and um and good to work with now this is a logo here this is a logo mock-up it's called a mock-up the way it looks with so the glass background is called a mock-up all right so that that's basically what i want to talk about on creativity you can sit down and come up with your concepts yes 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 definitely if i would advise you to do so at the same time you could check out what other people have done and pick you know find out what they've done and then just generate ideas from it look at two to three to four designs and then blend it in and, and then look at this i love this i love this this is a single color design or we could call it double color it depends on your own <laughs> definition of colors <laughs> So most people call it a single color, most people call it a double color design. You see, just red, black, gray, and white. Simple, classic for a business company. In fact, I like this flyer so much. I might likely use this concept for a design I have to do. I have a business uh, design, something I have a business conference design to do. So very likely I would steal this concept. You get what I'm trying to say. So this is amazing. This is good. This is good. Alright, so creativity. You have to be creative, you have to come up with stuff, you have to go out check out designs you could go on google and just type in um flyer design concepts click on the images tab there and you will be amazed what you would find you'll be amazed what you would come up with you'll be amazed at the things that you see there so all right so right now i'll be moving to my photoshop screen so you could see what i have and then we would delve and we'll look deeper into things now the first is creativity that's the first pillar of a design career the second one is your skills and because of that because of that particular one we're gonna be moving in deeper into it so I'm gonna be sharing my Photoshop screen with you in the next one second don't go anywhere my screen will be coming up next all right guys so uh, what I want to do right now is as regards skill you know most people would say you know you have to be skillful be skillful but your skills generally your skills basically it's it's left to you you have to come up with your concept you have to come up with your designs you have to be the one that will be you have to just sit down and be willing to push and push and push and develop yourself and really there's no way to improve your skills than by continual work you continue doing it you continue doing it and that way you improve your skills you improve your creativity not because you know you want to you don't you don't work because you have a job to do you work because you want to build yourself so even when you don't have something to do you sit down and you just work on something that's the best way to um, increase your skills so the first pillar of a design career is your creativity I shared with you how you can get creative how you can find ideas 
checking out other people's work the second thing i i'm talking about right now is your skills you have to improve your skills you have to up your game and you get what i'm trying to say you have to push yourself beyond the limit if you're learning corel draw learn it to the best if you're learning photoshop learn it and make sure you're hitting it you get it all right so on my screen here i have a uh, one a book cover that i was uh, given by a client to make um the title of the book is a homeless panic a homeless experience in america so i did this cover from scratch uh, i want to show you how we got there and i'm hopeful that i'll be able to recreate this because it's been uh it's been i think it's almost a year since i did this and uh i should be able to recreate it definitely i should be so i might not really go into the making of the back cover details the the synopsis you get what i'm trying to say i might not really do that but i would work with you guys right now we're going to do this together and i'll show you how we came across how i came with the design we might have something a bit different even better than this one because this is this was a good work i, I actually liked it but i think i could do better now you get it's, it's been a year <laughs> all right so i'm gonna open up my my photoshop screen right now so you see all right so this is the book this was when i made it this is when i made it uh as you can see here this is the front page i'm sorry my my, my pc is a bit slow uh, i had to use this i have lots of i don't think i've shut this thing down a week or so so this is the front page and then uh, this is the back page to load up now so all right so this is the back page and uh, this is the front page so i put them all together created a mock-up for it and that was how we we're able to achieve this this is simply a mock-up to show the client uh, this is how your book is going to be when it's printed you get what i'm trying to say so all right now um if you're given this kind of a job, you know, most people are, most of us are used to flyers and them, but I'm sure there will be a particular set of people that, you know, you want to learn how to make covers of book for authors and stuff like that. It's fun. So, uh, one of the things you would need to know from your, um, from your client is, is what they need or what they have already. Permit me, sorry. What they have. So if you're going to be making a book cover, for example, like this, one of the questions I ask is, what is the book title? What is the book title? Um, then what is the book subtitle, if any? Uh, that is, if most books don't have a subtitle, like this one has, you know, a homeless panic, the homeless experience in America. So the book title for this will be the homeless panic you know and then this would be um the homeless experience in america the homeless experience in america it says uh a homeless panic not the, the, so all right so you got what i'm trying to say there right so the next thing we'll do i ask is you know um auto name what is your name? I mean, you don't want your name to be on your book. <laughs> so, auto name and um, what else? Synopsis. 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 So, that is the whole story at the back. You know, um, this book is about um, the life of so so and so and all those kind of stuff. So, then we have for auto, that's for auto bio. You know, this. Uh, my name is james i am the author of the book i live in you get what i'm trying to say so those are the things we ask for then we ask for page counts because before you would need a cover most times it's always advisable that the client knows how many pages his or her book is going to be so page count they tell you my page is 300 my, my book is 300 pages now the reason why you need the page count is so that you can be able to determine the width of the spine uh, how wide the spine is going to be i have a book here which uh i have this yes i have this book here now this is um can you see it um it's a devotional kids and teens devotional uh which i this is volume two 
this is volume 2 but I I made volume 4 volume 4 is out I don't think I have it anywhere close by here but uh, a friend of mine made this particular book for the author the author happens to be my uh, my mother my, my mom so a friend of mine made this for her but I was privileged to make um, volume 4 of it also now this is what I'm talking about now this book has um let me see it has 204 pages 204 pages now you agree with me that the spine the spine of the book here let me see let me turn my camera the spine of the book is dependent on the size of the book now if this book was half its size it means the spine will be half i don't know if you get what i'm trying to say i'm sure you get it so if the book was half it means the spine will be half so the page count tells you what the spine uh would be how it would look now the reason i'm saying this is uh i want to show you something quickly let me show you this now we have this details here i'll try and bring up my browser again now most times most people you're going to be working online you're going to be doing stuff for people most people publish their book with kindle i'm in no way advertising them and they're not paying me for the adverts or anything but i just want to show you guys watching something um there are different sizes for a book you know most people do flyers say i want an a5 flyer i want a rectangle flyer but when it comes to books now there are different sizes for your book a book could be as small as this could be as big as this so we have different sizes one of the most common sizes is the six by nine which is 6.14 inches by 9.21 inches you see so one of the most common is this so let's say i pick that right now that's the size of the book i want to make um then the page counts i chose here 140 the page is 140 pages for the book you see now the paper color on the inside of the book is it white is it cream is it color most books are white let me see this this is white this is white some books are cream some books can be blue color it depends most times the color has to do and helps in terms of the weight of the book the weight the weight of the book so all right so white we're using white and then if i click on the download cover template it will download a pdf file for me now that file will be my template that will be the guide for the design you get it now all right so i have downloaded that already the website is um kdp.amazon.com slash yeah blah, blah, blah. you can see it there but in case you want to get there faster you don't want to memorize all that just go to google and type kdp template the very first um um, result it brings out is this link so let's come back here so I downloaded that particular template and this is it you see it you see now so this is it um, let me see um, 6.14 by 9.12 this is a 140 pages see how tiny the the spine is you see that you see the blue dotted lines is the boundaries those are like more like bleeds for the spine it means that whatever text i want to write must be within this space it must not exceed it must not come out if i wanted to show it must not come out in fact you could get some points that some spines are so tiny that I would even advise you not to write anything inside you get it all right so this particular book i want to run now quickly hope we can do this in the next 10 minutes this particular book is the homeless panic a homeless panic so i want to try and remake it very quickly for us here uh, i've saved out my um assets my assets are um let me see i've saved out my assets my assets are uh, the pictures the images the stuff that i'll be using to get it I, i'm actually on my on my tab just trying to sort it out okay um all right so these are my assets let me open up my pc permit me to take this few seconds all right so oh this guy is slow wow it's terrible okay probably i should close up chrome because of my uh, the memory it's actually uh, so let me close up some tabs in Chrome so I could free up some memory space. Before I do that, let me let me share this website with you. And I can close up Amazon and yeah, I can close up Amazon. I can close up Pinterest. Right now, I think we've talked about that. 
and then um there's a site called free picks i use it also uh, most could be home office this could just start in but i don't have actually base come here pin flyers and then um in the resources whatever you're using you're using the photoshop so oops i think i clicked on business already and then let me take out the flyer and stuff okay so come here i choose photoshop psd and i choose free so what it does if i type in flyer here now and search see this so it brings our results everything here is a photoshop template and they are all editable this is nice elegant home for sale so this is nice this is good looks good uh, uh, Now, see this so if I click on downloads here right now it's going to download a Photoshop file for me the Photoshop file can be edited in my Photoshop application I could change the picture I could change the text anything I want and then use it so you could check this site or freepic.com then there's a uh, site for stock images you know normally as a graphic designer you're not allowed to just pick any image online and use you could get sued you could get you know but you know it's uh, it, it's wrong that you just see a picture of someone online and you use it no what you do is you come to um, images here you come to pixabay.com or you come to pixels pixels.com pixels.com uh, whichever one you get i usually use both of them so i um the book we're making is a homeless panic so let me say i type in homeless homeless man here it's gonna load it up see that you see this um, um, I think I got my image from here, somewhere here. I don't remember exactly if it was Pixabay or Pixels. But I remember this. I remember coming here to search for images for the book. A Homeless Panic. You know. So these are free to use images. You could use any of these images without getting sued, without getting into trouble with anybody. Uh, you saw my picture. But some clients will specifically ask you for where you got your image from. So you just send them a link that, you know, I got my image from here. This is where I got the image from. So this is a, is a stock website. You're free to take anything here. You're free to, um, you're free to take anything here. In terms of pictures and uh, images. Uh, let me see. Um, I can't find my exact one. Can't find my exact one, the exact one I used. Well, so that's basically how this works. So check it out, Pixabay and then Pixels.com. So I'll be closing this now. I'll be closing it now. Oh, wow. Okay, this is terrible. It's running too slow. Running too slow. Um, um, I have a feeling I should just pause the audio. Hold on, I'll, I'll pause the video right now, but I'll be back in a few seconds. So I just need to fix this. All right. So I I apologize for that. Um, my PC was running a bit slow. I had to quickly fix that. Out. All right. So I think we're back on track. Okay. So. Uh, let's go straight into this quickly um we're gonna be making the book cover like i said earlier this we're gonna try and remake this very quickly and i'm hoping to do this in the next 10 minutes 10 minutes all right so this is our template that we got from kdp like i told you earlier so what i'm gonna do right now is to take my rectangle tool well first of all first of all i think i should say this um kdp gives you this with certain sizes and bleeds uh, you see these dotted lines the the bleeds you're not supposed to exceed those lines your background your design your background color can exceed the line so that by the time they cut the book and by the time the book is being trimmed you would have your color around those edges but your text your images whatever is important should not exceed that line so let me put this so when i clicked on my rectangle tool and i just put the rectangle all over it uh, our background is going to be white before we do that I was about to say this 
what I would advise you to do is to take your ruler from, from you know from here and just grab it here place it at this edge then take another one place it here yeah follow me uh, then here too on those lines so they'll be like a bit full. like putting some here exactly on the bit line then this corner here too and then we'll bring this here so this is more like a guide for you so you know that whatever i'm designing will be within this place whatever i'm designing will be within here then there's this place now this is the barcode i usually do this i click on the rectangle and i create a rectangle over the barcode this is just a guide for me then i just give it another color it will be black i lock the layer all right then so i can turn this on now now turning this on turning back that layer you see how it looks so i know that my front cover is here my back cover is here my spine is here very tiny spine i'm telling you so um let's go let me close this tab to try to free up my mind okay yes this is our first image the image of the man you can see it now so this is the image let's take it in so i could drag this into that tab or i could just right click here and do duplicate the layer so duplicate is on this one that's that's our tab that's what we're working with so duplicate it right there and we have that and i come back to it i can close you now i think i'll close this now reduce this size let's see it clearly um then i bring this here i think this is how it looked on the cover right all right i feel like you guys are here already like you're here with me so i'm talking like you <laughs> all right so i just expand this so i could spread it out oh i made a mistake in the expansion i let it go too quickly so i just do this cover the entire page you see that i think we're making progress right yes we are now let's see our original oh it comes up more so let's take it up 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 a bit up 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 up, up. yeah that, that looks good that looks good yeah it does it does now uh i said earlier i created the assets the look at this there's a background color there's there's a let me show you let me turn them off one after the other i turned you off and then we turn you and this is the background for okay yes for the background here you see this i turn this off 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 and then turn this off and i have my image <laughs> okay so let's have fun with it now right so i'm gonna be showing you everything i did here one after the other and we're gonna do it together so you see now the first thing i did here is that i duplicated this layer so Control j you could use Control j or just duplicate the layer but i use Control j now so i created a new layer from it then in this new layer i came to filter blow gaussian blow and uh Oh, that's terrible not that much not that much so somehow that all the reason i'm doing the blow is i want to fade out the background i want to fade out all these places because this is the main attention this is what well, is where i want the reader's eye or the viewer's eye to focus on first in the book so i want to blow out these places so i duplicated the layer first and then got my blow to the level i would like it uh, too much this this looks good okay let's use this this is good so click on okay now if i turn this layer off i see the original one if i turn it back on i see the blood layer so what i do here is after creating this layer i then create what is called a layer mask this is a layer mask so i click on the layer mask now because i want this guy to be visible i come to my brush tool uh, that's too small i increase the size of the brush increase the size of the brush and then i just want the guy to be visible right so i brush over him you see 
see that that brush over the guy a brush over him clearly yes so that way he is visible all i did was i created a layer it's more like out of the blood layer i just cleaned out a certain section that's basically it. so the original one is still here the blood one is here now this is or this can be used for you have a picture and you want to blow out some certain people at the back you got to try and see so you just put your picture here your first picture then you duplicate your picture blow the one at the front and then wipe out yourself and make it you got to try and see it okay so we have that now the next thing we want to do based on our sample here is uh let me take this away is what next do we have we have um we have a background there so i have that already i'll load it up right now i have my folder here assets good so this is it bring it in bring it into photoshop good so this is it i just drag it now to my design layer drop it here and um I meant to do this on both pages but since this covers one page all i'll do nice duplicate it and then take the other duplicate to the next page so this is the back page this is the front page right so based on the way it looks in the original it's um it doesn't look like it so what i did here was i came to my blending mode and i chose divide where's divide i chose divide divide is right here choose divide now you see that look at look at that look at that turn it off see this is normal turn it back on it creates that blend like ah, this is beautiful i don't know how to explain it but i'm sure you can see what i'm trying to say but you see this just by putting that on it and then to making that into a divide it changes the whole atmosphere it changes it's more like you just color graded the whole image it's more like a color grading look at that look at that see that there are other options you could try out <clears throat> this is overlay it gives it this blue feel now look at this is not bad too see there are many options you can try out many uh but i'm sticking with divide so divide is good here but what we'll do now is we'll do that for the second part of it also so divide also see okay let me show you the original uh, oh have i closed it no i haven't i just turned off the layers right see let's see see that see i think we're getting somewhere right this is beautiful some people would even want to stop here and just be like no this is too fine <laughs> all right the next thing we want to do from here is i have an image this image layer four i'll bring it in right now so we're done with this we can close you up close it up so let's go the next image we want to bring in is this one this is it so what I'm gonna do quick I'm gonna take out the white background because it will be disturbing so this is it it's not as sharp as the other one so I bring this in right now drop it right here and um, spread it to cover the point if I want I use this to create a glittery kind of like a glittery atmosphere at the top it makes it look like the top is shining you get it so I duplicate this yeah all I did to duplicate it so let me just say it is I held my Alt key, hold Alt down, click on the image that you want to duplicate, hold Alt and then drag it to where you want it, it will automatically duplicate it, right? So, for this one, I chose Exclusion. I chose Exclusion, where is Exclusion? Where is Exclusion? Exclusion right here. So, Exclusion, this. Look at it, changes it. Exclusion. But, rather than stop there, I dropped the opacity to 24%. Drop the opacity to 24%. Let's see. See that? It creates like a stain all over there, which looks good. So I dropped this to 24% too. Awesome. Now look at that. Look at that. It looks like when you're shooting a picture from a lens, but the lens is all stained up. You get it. I would explain okay let me let me say it. the reason is because I chose that was when there's a home expand of a hormone in pain so there's stains there's stuff like that so we're trying to make the center focus on the person himself so you have to be creative, come up with a concept and then 
work with it. Now, this is the next thing to do. The next thing to do is uh, I created a rectangle. Yes, this is it. I created a rectangle to give it that that brownish feeling. You get it. So, what we'll do now? We'll come back to our rectangle tool and create a rectangle. We could even fill it up, right? Fill it up. A rectangle to cover. The color code for this was um. Let me see. 6E4141. 6E4141. Color code. Color code. There's a website I'd like to share with you guys. It's called um, .co. I don't want to open my browser again because of time. Uh, but what colors the co? See, this is it. C-O-L-O-R-S dot C-O. What it does is uh, it gives you matching colors. Matching colors. So take, for example, you're doing a design and your client says he wants it, his, his company color is red. And you use red and it looks too reddish. You go to colors.com. Put in red, lock it in, and then to give you a similar color to red. If there's enough time, I'll load up the site and show you how it works. So it's just for you to find matching colors. It's a good help for designers. Now, what I did with this is for the rectangle, I um, removed the bottom, but I think I did something with blending mode. Okay, I reduced the opacity to 45%. So we're using the opacity to 45% see that but we still want to clear the man and bring him into focus so i create a layer mask again use my brush to um, increase it increase the brush to and then brush over him brush over him brush over him see we could still drop the opacity i think um, you know, design changes over time. What you consider classy at first might not be classy. Now, um, okay, this, no, let's use this. Let's use this. Why I why I reconsidered putting in the brown background is so that the text, the text you put on it, or the text we're going to put on it, will show to come out, and we'll be able to see what we write. Because if we write a text on the, if we write the white text on this background, it would show. But it won't show as much as it will show here because you dimmed the whole background. So it's more like you're darkening the whole background. Let me see how black will look there. Uh, not too much. No. Let's take a brown. Because we're trying to remake this, right? I think we're in, we're in progress. We're making progress. We're making progress. We're getting there. Now, the next thing is... Um, let's see. What do we do next? If you realize, this is... This is what we're making right now. This is the original. This top part, this top part is darker than the rest. So what I did there was I created what I call an eclipse. Created an eclipse. Um, this is it. So I created an eclipse right there from here. Let's hit it from here like this. To here. That's good. That's good enough. That's an eclipse. But it should cover everything, so it's gonna go this way and this way. I think we're good like that. We could, we could use that. Um, then we'll drop the opacity to 60, 66. I think I use 66. But see, it doesn't look like this, right? And it's black, not brown. So let's change that to black. Ooh, it doesn't look like it, but we'll get there right now. So see what we'll do here. We'll come to filter and then we'll come to blow, Gaussian blow, because we want to blow out the eclipse. It will rasterize the shape definitely, we don't mind, because we're trying to achieve something. So we'll blow it out. See that? See, if I leave it like this, this is, how, this is the original look. But the more we increase the blow, it fades out, it fades out, blows out, blows out, blows out, blows out the edges, and then you won't even know it was a... It was, a, it was an eclipse that was there. So see the difference. This ah, because the skies are too bright here, so we just want to dim it a bit. So that's good. Uh let me see if we spread it out more, spread out more like this. Okay. So what I do now, just duplicate the layer and bring it here again. To so have it on both sides. If you notice, if you notice clearly, there's this line here. See this line? 
we shouldn't be. This is because I overlapped one eclipse on the other. See what I'm saying? What you can do for that is on that eclipse, you come to your layer mask, click on the layer mask, then use your brush to go click on brush and then just simply blend it in. Blend it in. Yay! Yippee! Well, I was there. We're getting somewhere, so this is it. That's one. That's two. All right. What else did we add? All right. So we're done. We've gotten the eclipse now, right? We go. Now, next one I added was this particular image, which is our final image to add. We can delete this and close the rider, not delete. Now, what that image does, it's it's more like a tree image. It creates this scratchy kind of feeling. You can see that like, it looks scratched. Let me let me turn it off. This is it. So you see, it looks very similar to what we have already. See, it looks very similar to what we have already. But this has that image here, and it looks like something was scratched. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring it in. I'm gonna bring in. This is it. So we just bring it there. Look at this. How do we blend this in? I'll show you right now. So this is it here. I just drop it into our layer. Um, fill it up to the screen. Let's zoom it in. I think we'll get with that. Now, blending mode again. You would use blending mode so much in your designs because you have to use the blend two pictures together and make it look natural and good. So I used soft light here, but let me show you how it goes. So let's use dissolve. Dissolve looks normal. Darken. Eh, no. Definitely not. <laughs> no. Linear burn, no. No. Tempting. Tempting. But okay, so lighting. Lighting is good. So let's hold lighting. Screen. No. Too white. Color dodge. Linear dodge. Like a color. Nah. Super lay. No. Soft light. Yeah. Mm, not bad okay so let's do soft light which is the original one we have then let's reduce the opacity to 24 20. so I'm gonna give you a minute to just look at it a few seconds look at it it's lovely right it's lovely look at it it looks beautiful doesn't it haha <laughs> We're almost there. So I think we're getting to the point of, of the design, right? So it looks almost alike. I will zoom in this. Yes, see that. See that. So what we're gonna do simply is just to duplicate it also to this part so we can see it on the left too. I think we're we're making progress. But the back cover is different from the front cover in a way because of the outlook see that for the back cover the brown is more obvious the brown is much more higher so what we're gonna do here is on the back cover here which is this part this is for the brown uh, I think I should have done that earlier I'm going to just simply um, duplicate that layer see then remove the duplicate layer of the back uh, I don't know what I'm making. I don't know what I'm saying, right? So all I duplicated the lab, I only duplicated this part. It's like I'm putting the brown only on the left here. I put the brown only on the left side here. Then I have another brown that I put everywhere. So because I'm having double uh, feel of brown here, it looks thicker than here. Then there's this uh, tiny arrow here. Which is because of the overlap. So what we do is our layer mask comes in again, and our blending mode, and we just wipe that out. Like that, right? I think we're good with that. It might not be too uh, intense like that. Let's drop it a bit. But it's quite different from the other side. If you see it. Yep. All right then. So um, I think we're basically done with that. Looks good. Looks good. All right, so um, I want to round this up very quickly, so we can all move and we can all you know. Then the next thing we're gonna, I have to do is to input our text. You know, you could just get your client's details and then write it. But one, I want to talk about this. Uh, the font I used for this panic is called Insomnia. Insomnia font. 
it gives you the slash everything at once so um, you see um, get what I'm trying to say here so it does everything for you then the font I used for homeless is athletic okay I it can I'm sorry HM but uh, athletic looks quite similar let me, let me see that okay, let me duplicate that first but I think athletic has the so it's the so the so like let me see, this is athletic right yeah I was wrong okay not too similar though but this is athletic this is HN ah, quite similar actually so it's, it's easy for me to get confused though so that's um HN so this is HN fonts then this is insomnia you can get the fonts and this is a uh, Tahoma Tahoma is I think Tahoma comes with uh, Tahoma is more like a default font so then this is Tahoma also this is ink free ink free because I needed something scripty looks like scripts let it load up like a script one yeah see that just needed that feeling all right so and then that leaves us with the back cover simply text i just all i did was i duplicated took the um the title the way it's written in the front cover brought it into the back cover and then uh just did that let me let me see if i could do something quickly here let me see okay so a Homeless, then um, a a a x a eight h. Okay, let me get in there. Um, all right. So let's just use athletic for the time. So we're homeless. Center this here. Um, ensure it's at the center. There's a way to know if it's at the center. What you can do is click on the layer and click on this to select the region where you want your text to be come back to this tool it's quite it's quite simple just select your layer click on the select tool select where you want your text to be centralized on this whole point then come back to your pick tool automatically to bring out all these options then click on this center point it centralizes it for you so then this is panic right panic uh then we use the in sonia sonia font see that increase it increase it increase it and just bring it in here i don't know if it's too big i don't think so so oh homeless is not right not correct then we could just make this bigger so it doesn't look um, um cheated. So and then I bring this here. I change the fonts to Tahoma. Then make this um. Let me use my name, Richard. Richard. And I reduce this. Oh. Okay, it looks good then um so what i simply did here this is what i'm trying to do is i just clicked on the layers of the title duplicated it and then simply took it here see what i'm doing then i just shrinked it so it's the back cover so it doesn't have to be that big shrinked it and placed it where i want it to be you get it so what else is there the whole text uh, i'm not gonna i'm not going to Put the text um then this is our this was our subtitle right the homeless the homeless experience in america you see then yes let's not forget i created a layer here rectangle layer please also try as possible to rename your layers this is for the um, i think it's called the isbn the barcode or something so I, I just want to bring this up to the top so it should be here and I'll know that nothing will be placed on the but I don't think I did that on this cover 
the client did not place it so it was even good so i think we can even do away with it so it's quite simple arrange your text place the picture place this place the client logo if there's any um, printing press logo this is the printing press logo and it is owned by the client himself so you see there james james low publisher and the author name is James Lowe also. So. Alright, so I think we almost had our, our mark there. I think somehow we're, we're quite able to duplicate this, which is great. We're quite able to duplicate this, which is good. I've changed this. <laughs> Alright, so see, see. So what you do now, you simply save it and. Um, Save it as a um, homeless, homeless cover test. So um, let's get it. Now that is beautiful. So this is our front cover. This is our back cover. Back cover without text. There's a time. Uh, we've almost used an hour, so I'd like to round this up now. So that is basically how it works. Now when it comes to the next point, I want to talk about one of the three pillars of um, the design career is marketing marketing it's it's easy to have the design skills but if you don't have know how to sell yourself if you don't know how to sell that you know you don't know how to sell your, your skills or sell yourself and get the right client you would be designing for yourself at home <laughs> that's the truth so i want to say this that um while you work on medullary while you work on medullary while you work on yourself Create a portfolio. I have an Instagram account, Doxa Media Design, where I post all my works. Um, I have a website also, doxamedia.com.ng. All my flyers, all my designs are on that um, website. They're on the website, they're on the Instagram page. So that's like a portfolio. So when someone says, I need a design, they say, can I see some of your works? You direct them to your um, Instagram page or whatever. There are other platforms to get a portfolio. There's um there's Flickr, there's Flickr, there's Behance, and so so I'm hopeful that who knows maybe someday Medullary will incorporate it. I'm just shedding an idea that Medullary will incorporate it into your website where you could have a portfolio section where people will get to see other people's work. It would really be nice. So create a portfolio, market yourself. Go online, go on Instagram, create an account. This this time is not a personal account. You're not uploading family pictures or anything. You want to do business. You want to market yourself. So create the account, upload your works. And also, you could even run adverts for on Facebook, run adverts for two, three days per week or something. Then with time, people will get to contact you. So you must definitely market yourself. There are other things I would love to talk about, but I'm short time, I'm out of time. And uh, I want this video to exceed uh, one hour. If I don't want it to exceed to five minutes, so please permit me to bring it to a close here. Yeah. I am open for questions. I'm open for questions. Please, uh, the video will be on YouTube. I think this will be on YouTube. So um, I'll be available to answer any question anyone has as regards this. So definitely I'll be here. So I, I, I mentioned earlier that there's a website called coolers.com, C-O-O-L-O-R-S. It allows you to find, it allows you to find matching colors for your work. So you don't just slap blue on black and red. No, you will find the exact colors that will blend in that. It will be attractive to the eyes. You get what I'm trying to say. So that is basically what I would like to share here. I want to thank you guys also for staying till the end. Thank you, Medillary, for the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to be on your platform. And definitely, I hope we get to do this again soon. So my name is Richard. I said earlier at the beginning, I'm the creative director for Dugza Media Design and for Flow Creatives. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be and thank you for listening to me, you know. So I'll catch you guys some other time. God bless you.